In this tutorial we're going to talk about the decline of web safe colors. So first of all, what are web safe colors? Well, if you think about monitors that we use today on our computer screens, we're able to view literally millions of colors, 16, over 16 million colors to be precise. Um, in the old days, however, with older monitors, the monitors used what was known as VGA displays or 8-bit computers, which meant that they could only actually display 256 colors. 216 between a Mac and a PC. Um, the problem was that if you used a color on your computer that the monitor of a user didn't have, then it would cause distortion and dithering. And this means that the color wouldn't display correctly. So what web designers used to have to do was to use what are called web safe colors. And this means that you stick to the 256 uh, colors that are safe for display on any type of monitor. This is probably slightly out of date nowadays because most people have monitors or devices that can display millions of colors so it's not really an issue anymore. However, to be on the safe side it's usually a good idea to use web safe colors for things like large background colors or continuous colors that you definitely don't want any distortion on. We're now going to talk about choosing color with the color picker in Photoshop. So uh, the first thing to notice is on the left side of your screen at the bottom of the toolbar you have two color boxes. One is called the foreground color. This is the most commonly used color so when you're painting with a brush or using your fill uh, paint bucket tool this is the foreground color that will be used. The one behind it is called the background color box. This is less used, but it could be uh, employed when you're using gradient fills, for example. If you want to click one or the other, just click on the box, the foreground or the background box, or you can use the X key to switch between them. Or there's this slight curved arrow which will toggle between the two colors. You can also always switch back to default black and white for foreground and background by clicking on the small black and white squares here. So if we click on the foreground color um, itself, we will open up what's called the color picker. And from this dialog window, we can see on the right side here, you've got H, S, and B. These stand for H, for hue, and this refers to the actual color, the base color we're talking about here. S stands for saturation, and this is the amount of gray that has been added to the color. And B stands for brightness, that's the amount of black or white that has been added, so how bright the color is in comparison to the base hue. Also at the bottom we can see there is a hexadecimal code for each color that you select, and you can use this uh, in HTML code for telling HTML which color you want to use for your fonts or your background colors and so on. The cube that we can notice here only appears if your color is not web safe. So it's a useful tool if you want to make your color web safe just click on the cube and Photoshop will automatically find the nearest web safe color to the one that you've selected. Next we're going to talk about sampling color with the eyedropper tool. So if we select the eyedropper tool from the toolbar and then click on any color in our image we'll notice that the foreground color changes to the color we selected. If we click on a document window and drag from Photoshop to say for example the desktop, we can select any color that we can see on our monitor. This is a very useful uh, way to select colors from applications you might have in the background or from your browser window for example if you found a website that has colors on it that you want to use. The key thing is you have to start from an open document in Photoshop then select the eyedropper tool, click and drag from your Photoshop document to the area where you want to select the color. When you are over the color you want to select, let go of your mouse button and the foreground color in Photoshop will change automatically to your color selection.
Okay, the next topic we're going to talk about is choosing color from the swatches panel. So if we just open up the swatches panel, if it's not already open, you can open it from the Windows drop-down menu at the top of your screen and just select any color from your swatches. And we are going to add a new type layer to this image by selecting the text tool and I'm going to just type the words ride the tide. Then I'm going to highlight the text and hide my highlight so I can just see the text uh, in its native form. The keyboard shortcut for this is Ctrl and H on a PC or Command and H on a Mac. So I've got my text highlighted. Now if I click on any of the colors in my swatch panel, I can see the color of the text change interactively. So this is a really quick and clever way to browse through the different colors and see how they match against the background. If I click on the flyout menu in the swatches panel, um, I can choose web hues. This is a good way to choose web safe colors that are um, complementary to one another. And we can click on any of these again to change the color of our text. In Photoshop we can also make a custom color swatch. So if we open up any web page in our browser, uh, a website for example that you like the color scheme of, and what we're going to do is go back to Photoshop and clear out the swatch panel. So in your swatch panel, open the flyout menu and click on Preset Manager. And then choose all of your colors in the swatch and press the Delete button to clear out your swatch. Go back to the main swatch uh, and select the eyedropper tool from the toolbar. And like we looked at in the last section, if you click and hold anywhere in the Photoshop document and then drag the cursor over a color in your web browser on the website that we're looking at and release the mouse button when you're over the color you want, you can see that the foreground color will be selected. Next, we have to click inside the swatch panel and then our foreground color will be added to the swatch. So if we repeat this process once more, so select the eyedropper tool click and drag from the Photoshop document and then drag out to our web browser window to the color that we want to select, change the foreground color and click once inside the swatch panel and our color will be added to our swatch. Okay, so if we hold down the Alt key uh, and click on any of the colors in the swatch we can delete it very quickly rather than having to go back into the preset manager dialog window. Another option in Photoshop is Adobe Cooler, which is an application, a flash-based web application that Adobe have developed, which allows you to select color themes. And it's a, sort of an open, well, not open source, but it's a, a, definitely a, a community, an online community of designers who have uploaded, created and uploaded their own color themes for other people to be able to use at their designs. You can access this directly from Photoshop by opening the Windows drop-down menu, selecting Extensions, and then Cooler. Uh, you need to have an internet connection in order for this to work because Photoshop will communicate directly with the Cooler server. And uh, if it's working correctly, you should see a list of color schemes being loaded into the window from the Cooler website. You can simply add these swatches to your Photoshop swatch uh, panel by clicking on one that you want and then clicking the small icon at the bottom of the window, uh, Add to Swatches. It's very easy. You can also search for themes that you might be looking for. For example, we could search for a chocolate theme and lots of color schemes related to chocolate will appear and we can add those to our swatches as well. Okay, next we're going to look at recoloring web graphics, a very useful technique. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this flower image. And we'll notice in the layers panel that the image has been broken up into multiple layers. So each element of the image is on a different layer. So the first thing we're going to do is select the leaves layer. And I'm going to turn on the transparent lock. This means that 
if I paint or fill on this layer, the transparency will be preserved, so it won't fill in anything in the transparent part of the, of the layer. So if I now go to my Edit menu at the top of the screen and choose Fill from the drop-down menu, then I'm going to select a purple color and I want to fill the foreground color with the color purple. So if you click OK, you'll notice that the, everything on the layer changes to purple except for the transparency which is preserved because we locked it. Okay, if I move on to the outline layer, the next layer up, I'm going to do the same thing. Make sure that you lock the transparency. Actually, before we do that, leave the transparency unlocked and follow the same process. Go to your Edit drop-down menu, choose Fill, select a different color, and you'll notice that the entire layer gets filled with that color. That's not what we want, so undo that. Command Z or Control Z and go back to the uh, Layers panel, lock the transparency on this particular layer, and then use Edit Fill to fill the outline of your flowers. If we look to the Text layer, it is slightly different in this case because the, there is transparency on the layer, but we don't need to lock it, and we actually can't lock it. As you'll notice, if we select the layer, you, the lock transparency icon is grayed out. This is because text in Photoshop is vector graphics, so we don't need to actually block out the uh, transparency. Photoshop automatically does it for us. So if we go to Edit Fill and choose a color, we can just fill the text layer automatically without having to lock it. Okay, and the last thing we'll just look at is copying color as HTML, so the hexadecimal code we talked about before if you right click on uh, any color in your swatch, you can get a drop down menu that says copy color as HTML. You can do this with any color in your image document as well. And then you can just paste that HTML hexadecimal value into a text editor, for example, or into a HTML document for use in your web designs.